Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. I've been looking for an excuse to build this pre-YouTube project again for quite a while now. It's a really simple project using basic construction lumber and construction adhesive to make a really cool wall treatment. And recently I was invited to be a participant in the Wood Art Challenge by a bunch of DIY bloggers, YouTubers, and Instagrammers. So, I guess excuse acquired, right? So this is a really simple project that should only really take a weekend, maybe really a day, really just a couple hours, depending on how quickly you can batch this stuff out. So before I jump into this project, let me quickly mention that down below in the description is uh, links to all of the projects and videos and articles around all of the other creators that are participating in the Wood Art Challenge. Also, be sure to check out the hashtag Wood Art Challenge and uh, see all of the progress shots and some of the cool stuff on your favorite social media platform as these creators sort of built their projects. I know my friends Evan and Caitlin have some really cool progress they did with some veneering work and twisting. I really look forward to see how that came out. So check out their videos and projects and send them some love too. And if you enjoy my project, please smack that like button and uh, drop a comment down below let me know what you thought about it. And uh, I guess let's get some materials together and let's do this. So I started out my project with the trip to the home center. I picked up a 24 inch by 20 inch project panel and then two two by six by eight foot boards. Back at my shop, I set up a stop block and measured out increments of nine and a half, seven and a half, five and a half, and three and a half inches respectively. Then I clamped a square piece of scrap wood up against the fence so that I could butt the boards up against there and batch out quicker and more consistent cuts. When you're using construction lumber, make sure you cut off the edge first just to get a good consistent square edge to work off of. From there, I proceeded to batch out all my cuts. I needed seven nine and a half inch cuts and I needed 13 or 14 seven and a half inch cuts. I was gonna rip these at two inches thick and an inch and a half respectively. So I was pretty sure I could get two two inch thick pieces out of the two by six and three, maybe four one and a half inch pieces. With all of my pieces cut to a more manageable size, it was time to take them to the table saw. I know this is a fine finish blade, but with pine it doesn't really matter, and I wanted it as smooth a surface as possible, so I didn't really have to sand these things. I batched these pieces out quickly, but this is one of those situations where you want to really pay attention to your table saw as you go through it. It's really easy to get distracted, and that's when you get hurt. So after I cut down these boards, um, for at least for the nine and a half and the seven and a half inch long ones, I went ahead and trimmed them to their final width or depth, I guess it's gonna be. Anyway, I did that so I could figure out exactly how much scrap I would have and what I could salvage out of it. And boy, am I glad that I did. I would have had to buy another two by six otherwise. So I'm gonna go through those scraps and cut out some of the pieces I can. Uh, I'll let you know in the uh, final plans or whatever I end up, maybe at the end of the video, I'll tell you exactly how many two by sixes you need to get all of the pieces you need to cover that full two foot by two foot project panel. Looking back on it, trimming these scraps wasn't the safest thing possible, but I did make this little push block just to make it a little bit safer, but you see how the cutoff keeps getting sucked into the table saw. I, I could have gotten away with this if I would have used a zero clearance insert plate, but I didn't have one made and I didn't feel like making one. All right, so I've cut all the pieces to their final sizes, and uh, one little piece of advice, um, you can make the half inch strips out of the scraps from the seven and a half inch pieces, but it's a lot safer to just wait till you get to the end and use the bigger piece of cutoff from the end of the two by six to just cut those half inch strips. So I've got all those strips cut. Now it's time for the easy part, which is really just adhering them to the piece of plywood. Um, so let's jump into that. Right now we're just finding the exact center points of this. All right, just by connecting the corners, I'm just marking 
where approximately the center is. And we're gonna start in the very middle with one of these little pieces of two by four equivalent or whatever we're gonna call it. All right, so I need to find the center of this guy. Okay, so this is gonna be sort of our keystone that we're gonna build everything around. And we also wanna make sure everything is square. So we're gonna use Carpenter Square to just set up at least our first row and then everything else can just build off of that. The rest of the assembly is pretty self-explanatory. You're basically just building a puzzle. So you'll wanna check every now and then to make sure your current row is straight and make sure you squeeze them together to do the alignment right and make sure you use just a little dab of construction adhesive so you don't get squeeze out. That squeeze out is not easy to get off. But from there, I'll leave you to this montage of putting the rest of it together. Ah, we're getting so close. So all that was left was to sand some of the saw marks and the stamps off of the construction lumber. And then I brought it over to actually spray on the finish. Now you could totally wipe on the finish if you wanted, but I had a sprayer, so I used it. And it really helped with getting into all those little nooks and crannies and putting in the finish. I just recently started spraying on finish and I have to recommend it. It's actually really easy and gives you a really nice consistent color. I don't stain much, but when I do, I prefer spraying. Now, even when you spray on a finish, you still have to wipe off the excess and the color just took to this pine like, oh, I, I'm just, I can't wait to show you the finished product. I am so happy the way that thing turned out. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching today. Remember to check out the other entrance in the Wood Art Challenge at the links down below or at that hashtag Wood Art Challenge, wherever you look at hashtags or things like that. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And remember to smack that like button and drop a comment on your way out of here, it really helps. You can also check out the links below for how to support me and check the videos after the video if you wanna see more from my channel. And remember to keep your tools sharp and to keep your mind Sharper.